midday report a little bit late do my best uh we've been putting together the show uh backlash on shark nation radio so this is the first time i had the time uh ironically because uh, this was not planned it is cinco de mayo i'm wearing a shirt basically the color of the interior of an avocado and a south carolina state symbol hat and south carolina of course is where the famous truck stop south of the border which is mexican themed is but this really was by accident not a good color combination either by the way oh actually it is green and red is the mexican uh, color combination i didn't even think about that either wow i guess i was meant to talk about cinco de mayo and i'm standing near a wall uh so <laughs> look into the, read into that however you want but that's all i'm gonna say about that at the moment um you can tune into my show later for that at uh, shark nation radio I'd probably go through the SoundCloud. That seems to work the best, or download the app on Android or Apple. Enough self-advertisement. Okay, let's talk about this. Hey, the New York Times may not be our favorite source of news. We may call it fake news, but they do publish some good stuff. And uh, this was an article by a Democrat governor that I think is worth paying attention to. So make some good points that can apply to our strategy. And uh, it's by Governor Steve Bullock, who is... It's the fourth time in a row the Montanans have elected a governor who, which is, who is a Democrat. This is a pretty strongly Republican uh, state, so maybe we should listen to what they have to say. He points out in there that when Hillary Clinton got 36% of the vote in Montana, he was reelected. Uh, and I just want to go over a couple of good points he makes uh, in here. Just, it'll be better for you actually to read the uh, column, and the link is there. Uh, the Democrat presidents have appointed four justices since uh, Ronald Reagan uh, nominated Sandra Day O'Connor, who was from Arizona and was kind of wishy-washy as a conservative. Uh, and all of them were from what he terms the Washington, New York, Harvard, Yale, Harvard, Yale corridor. Uh, you know, Easterners Neil Gorsuch, in contrast, was from uh, in contrast was from Colorado, and he's talking about why. He and before that, uh, the previous governor, I'm blanking on his name. Oh, God, I know his name. I've met him. I spent some time in Montana. Uh, Brian Schweitzer, uh, who was really kind of, a, of an independent background, not a career politician at all. And full disclosure, I do go up to Montana some. I love going up there. The hot springs are great. I have a good friend up there. I was just in Helena like a month and a half, two months ago. Spent close to a week up there. Lovely place. I, it is, you know... A fonder place for me than your generic, uh, predominantly Republican state. But back to what Governor Bullock wrote. Uh, he write. He wrote about why he's had success. But it's not really a secret, or all that hard to figure out. Above all, st spend time in places where people disagree with you. Reach out. Show up and make your argument. People will appreciate it, even if they are not inclined to vote for you. I will add that Montanans tend to be a particularly polite crowd. As a Democrat in a red state, I often spend days among crowds where there are almost no Democratic voters in sight. I listen to them, work with them, and try to persuade them. Who's going to really argue with that, you know? Uh, yeah, it's a good strategy for anyone, even if you're not in politics. And he makes a point, by the way, and this is in the New York Times. Democrats, as a national party, have ceased doing this. This has to change. Uh, and he goes on, really the point is for you to read it. He talks about health care, how Montanans are not in love with Obamacare, but they don't want to see it eliminated. And, you know, it's pretty convincing. It's not going to make me a Democrat, that's for sure. But, you know, you think, why can't some of our people think this way? So there you go. I, I, do, uh, I do want to give you his last paragraph here. And it's instructive. And by the way, Bill Clinton, whatever we think of him, and I don't think too much of him at all, but I'm not going to go into that here. He knew how to connect with people in the middle. And he's from Arkansas, which, you know, as a southern state, had a Democrat tradition, but it's overwhelmingly Republican now. And let me leave you with what uh, Governor Bullock says about Bill Clinton. I remember a humorous episode from Bill Clinton's presidency in which his advisors prevailed upon him one summer before his re-election campaign to spend his vacation in Montana and Wyoming instead of the usual Martha's Vineyard. And by the way, Montana and Wyoming are totally unnecessary for Democrats to win. Uh, they're so far, they're not swing states at all. Um, the theory was that he'd benefit from hanging out someplace a little more down to earth. He took the advice and won re-election. It's a lesson Democrats should take to heart. 
So you can take whatever metaphor you want out of that. And uh, really the point of this is to whet your appetite enough that you should read this very well written piece in the New York Times. And uh, New York Times is a subscription, but most of you probably don't like to look at it too much. You get 10 free articles a month. So that shouldn't be a problem the way Wall Street Journal sometimes can be. Uh, I will be back hopefully in time. Uh, and it's a little tricky on Fridays. Uh, getting ready for Shabbos, so hopefully I'll have my act together and be able to do a sunset report. I'm going to do uh, one of the more controversial parts, of two of the more controversial parts of this Torah reading. Very awkward if you're in a liberal, as I call, base Obama type synagogue, uh, because these are the two parts of Leviticus in this week where they talk about homosexuality, uh-uh-uh, and, uh, you know, I could dwell, a lot of rabbis and people would prefer to talk about love thy neighbor as yourself. How could that possibly make a rabbi look bad? But let's talk about the more controversial stuff. I'm going to bring you uh, some of what Dennis Prager has wrote. It's very interesting, very nuanced, very fascinating, and you probably don't read it to the kids because uh, the main one there has a lot of stuff that's a little lurid in there, but it's fascinating, and it's not necessarily what you think it is. The Torah is pretty clear, but now is not the time to go into that. And also, my podcast will be available at 6 p.m. Eastern Time today. Uh, I focus in this episode of Backlash, particularly on Cinco de Mayo, just because it's interesting. And uh, we're lucky to have on three good guests, but one whose name you may know, Giselle Fernandez, who's half uh, Mexican. And she has some interesting things to say, no doubt. All right, thank you for watching.